Hey guys, Starsky. Welcome to this hard light controller skill point guide, or if, if you like it, skill point um, build. Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to take you through the build I'm currently using as a hard light controller and see what you think, and also explain why I'm using this build. Now, um, I know most controllers. Actually, I know I know quite a few controllers that when they get all their controller on eight, they go into all the DPS and eight, so they can put out a little bit more damage. Well, as a hard light controller, I like to do the complete opposite. Instead of actually putting my skill points into DPS nades, I like to put my innate, I put my points into um, what I like to call survivability nades, which basically means I'll be able to survive longer and uh, you know be able to take more punishment. Um, this is handy for because let's face it, right? If you've got a controller who's uh, dying a lot and it's going to make the group suffer. You know, a dead controller is not going to give power, that means the healer's not going to give, going to get power, the DPS can't do damage, and the tank can't maintain aggro. For me, a controller is a very important role, and um, you, know, you need good, good controllers to literally power a group through the content. So, let's get started. So, currently at the moment, I have 161 skill points on Starry. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a skill point in my movement, first of all. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to prioritise, I'm going to get the um, all of the Vita first and then I'm going to get Cunning and then afterwards I'll explain to you what I'm doing from there. So let's go and get all the Vitalisation first. So let's stop down there. Now, if you're a, um, hard, if you're a controller and don't have as many skill points as me, so what we want to do is we want to get all the Vita first. So I've gone down the middle and got the Vita. I unlocked the Vita below by putting a skill point in the dominance. So this is what I'm literally going to be doing with my build to begin with. As a controller, you always want to maintain, uh, prioritize getting the vitalization first, since it's our most important stat. Afterwards, it'll be cunning. So the aim of my the build I do is I said it's, it's like survivability. Um, I can still put out some good damage. That's why I use like the robot sidekick and all that kind of stuff. But my main goal as a controller is to stay alive, so I can able to put out some good power for the group to achieve what they need to do. So as you always see it currently at the moment, I'm just literally going down the middle of each tree that has vitalization in it. Now if you don't have as many skill points as me, what you want to do is you want to prioritize getting over the T1. The vitalization, I mean the T1, you know, the vitalization in this row, instead of doing what I'm doing and go straight down to this one. But since this is a video showing you my build, um, I could pretty much just go straight into all the vitalization because I have enough skill points. So, sure is a lot of um, Vita innates. See if any in this one. Yep. Put a skill point cannon to unlock the Vita. Of staff. Nope. Okay. Two handed. Yep. Right. So this should be the last fighter and eight. So that's all the vitalization, all of the vitalization covered. So now we want to go back through and get all the cunning. This is our second most important stat, is our critical power chance. But the reason why I say to get all the, the vitalization first instead of just getting like the tier 1 Vita and then the tier 1 Cunning it's because um, with the neck mod you can get through from the uh, tactical mods you can get 9% power crit chance so that will cover your um, power crit chance until you're able to put skill points in the Cunning it's basically just a nice way of bumping up of uh, prioritizing 
all your fighter before you start going to kind of because this mod covers the um, kind of you would normally get well you normally would have had to get before they brought out the tier 2 and 8s let's make sure I haven't missed any no kind of there Now I think there is only three of uh, these ones, which add up to like 9%, that's why I said it covers your base 9% for if you use the tactical mod in your next socket. Okay, so I've got the Vita, I've got all the cunning, so that's my two primary stats out of the way. What next now is, um, is dominance. Dominance will add to the ability to control, stun, um, add bosses, all this kind of stuff but also adds strength to your shields based on what your dominance and restoration is. But what I used to do is I used to put all my skill points into dominance, I used to go get all the dominance innates. But I've changed that now, and the build I'm using is a lot more efficient and better than what it used to be. So instead of getting all the dominance innates, all I do now is I just get all the tier 1 dominance. Whoops. Because this one. As I just put into tier 1 dominance. Tier 1 dominance gives me 7 per skill point. Now let me find the tier 2 one. The tier 2 one only gives me 2. So for the 3 skill points I put in the tier 1, you know, it's, it's just not worth putting skill points in the tier 2 ones. It's just so many skill points wasted for such a little dominance. But I will show you the reason why after that for in a bit. So, so I've got dominance from that one. Dominance from that one. And that. Two and dominance in that one. Hoping that I think this should be the last of them. Yeah, it's the last one of the tier one dom. And now to where my build starts going off on survivability. My next stat I'm gonna get is restoration. Now for people thinking, why restoration for? Um I'm only getting tier one rest restoration for because it gives plus fifteen per skill point. And it will help the survivability of your shields. If you use a light barrier, it will add more strength to your light barrier. Than it would do if you get the rest of the dominance one because the tier ones do 15 per skill point when the tier two dominance only do two it's a big difference so it adds a lot more strength to your shields plus if you're using the hand mod regenerative shielding the more restoration you have the better heal you get from that one every time you use the light barrier also if you're using group shielding it would add a lot more strength to your group shielding as well since group shielding is based off restoration and your dominance Overall, this is to make your shield and survivability are a lot better. So, I want to get all the tier 1 restoration. See, this gives 15 per skill point instead of compared to the 2 per skill point I would have got from Dominance. It's a big difference in the um, amount you get from the skill point. I can't remember exactly how many restoration that are in tier 1. But that would appear to be it. Okay, so now we've gone and got our Vit Cunning, our dominance that we need, all the tier 1s, and we've gone and add our restoration to add strength to our shields and more healing from the mod. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start bumping up our characters' uh, general stats, as in like, you know, we want to bump up our HP next. So our next one to use, do, is we want to put all our points in a tier 1 HP or health. Whatever you would like to call it. This will give our character more health, so basically we're able to take more hits, plus with the 
the way we've mo um, put the skill points into the restoration is add a lot more strength to our light barrier. Meaning if we're going to get a big amount of incoming damage we have the HP to take the first hit and then we'll pop our light barrier to absorb the left, to absorb what left's left over. When our regenerative, regenerative model kick in and give us a, a nice heal for it as well. skill points in the tier 1 defense. So as you can see what I'm doing, I've literally what I'm doing is I'm covering all the survivability ones in the tier 1s since I get most of my skill points. Now I've been tried out this build compared to um, what I used to try. Like, you know, I've tried out controller and got a controller nades and then put skill points in the DPS ones and you know, I died more frequently than what I do now since I've changed my build, changed my skill points right now and gone for survivability. I could take more damage, I am a better team player overall. You know, I'm able to do my job so much better because I generally am able to survive a lot more damage. So that's all of the basics of the innates covered. So what I want to do then is when I go back to my movement mode and put in resonates because resistance is very portable but also very important for controllers is to break out masteries since we get some good power back from every breakout we do. And then since once I've done that, with the skill points left over, I'm literally gonna go into it. And then I'm gonna go start putting them into um, maybe some DPS innates. Because now I've got all my survivability that I want, I can actually now maybe start putting some in the precision so I can put out a little bit more damage. As you can see, I put the three points I've left over straight into the shield one because this is going to give me 30 position. So, I've total of 161 skill points, I've gone and got a lot of good survivability. And I still had three left over to put in and get 30 precision so I can little bump up my DPS a little bit. But for people who have more skill points than me, you, with the rest of the skill points you have left over, you can go and put them maybe in, um, if you want to carry on doing survivability one, you can go put them in the rest of them in restoration, since that will give you like plus seven restoration instead of plus two dominance. So go get go get the rest of the restoration ones for increased survivability, but if you don't want to, then maybe you can start working on your DPS mates, but instead of working on the critical ones, work on your precision ones first of all, since you'd be doing a lot of weapon combos to regenerate power. Okay hey guys, so that's pretty much my build, it's a survivability build, try it out for yourselves, I guarantee it will work, it's so much better than having uh, skill points put in DPS innates, as for better, you survive more and you become a better team player. So let me go, so guys, let me know what you think, has this worked for you or not, or if there's a different build you prefer, or if there's anything that you think I could uh, change to improve my build. So anyway, thank you for watching this, and until next time, I'll see you then. Beware my power. Green Lantern's life!